Good day. My name is Abisola Yeni. I'm the technical support engineer for Coast of Ken, Nigeria. Today we'll be talking about waterproofing admixtures. We'll list out the ranges of admixtures, the classes of admixtures according to ACI 212, that is American Concrete Institute. But before we go further, let me quickly introduce us to Coast of Ken. Coast of Ken was founded over a decade ago with products sold in more than 40 countries and we have our headquarters in the United States of America. We have been producing innovative construction chemicals that help give strength and increase the lifespan of a modern building and make living more comfortable. So we have different categories of construction chemicals ranging from concrete admixtures to waterproofing admixtures that we're going to be talking about right now. We have waterproofing membranes, the likes of um, polyurethane membrane, cementitious membrane, bituminous membrane, and um, acrylic membrane. We also have um, flooring system ranging from cementitious flooring system to resin system. We have tiling solutions, tile adhesive, tile grouts, and also products that you can use to maintain the tiled surface. We have structural grouts, expansion joint sealants, decorative mortar, repair and bonding agents. We have dampness and vapor remediation, all nine yards of construction chemicals. We have this. Moving to today, let's talk about concrete. Let's understand what it is about concrete, why we really need waterproofing admixtures. So we all know that concrete is a strong and it's a very versatile material that we use in construction. Although it is strong, it has the strength, it also has some limitations that when you subject it to harsh conditions like the physical force or abuse, weather conditions, penetration of water and chemical substances, these things can cause physical damage or deterioration on your concrete, which can lead to shortening of um, the useful lifespan of your concrete. Um, here on the slide, we'll be talking about concrete deterioration according to Portland Cement Association, that is PCA. First one we have here is abrasion or erosion. Abrasion occurs on uh, majorly on your concrete floor when you're moving um, load, when there is traffic, which is way more than the design load for the concrete. You see that the wearing the surface of your concrete is wearing off thereby exposing the aggregates in the concrete. This is not good for your concrete. So erosion occurs when um, it's, it, it's more related to hydraulic structures. When you have hydraulic structures like your um, dam and you have your spillway, as water is, water is gushing out, it is not just gushing out alone, it is gushing out with debris. So as the debris with the water pressure is coming out, it is hitting the surface of your concrete. This also can cause erosion on the surface of your concrete. Another one we have here is shrinkage and cracking. Shrinkage occurs from the uh, drying, the drying of your concrete. Um, when concrete is still fresh, yeah, it's like that. But when it is drying, when hardening, is happening it uh, gets to shrink and this shrinking would have an effect of a crack in it then freeze thaw cycles freeze thaw cycles these often occur in uh, in cold climate region when water freezes it expands so imagine water entering into your concrete then it freeze, it would expand, then that will cause pressure in your concrete and this pressure will cause cracks over the time because as water is entering and it's freezing, it's the freezing again. This is what we call the freeze thaw cycles. It is going to cause pressure in your concrete, thereby leading to crack, you know, sulfate and sulfate attack and uh, chemical attack. Groundwater contains sulfate and also when you have chemicals on your concrete surface, this thing, because concrete is porous, it, they get to penetrate, aside from water now, they get to penetrate into your concrete, causing harm 
to your concrete and also corrosion of your reinforcing steel, especially when you're doing anything with chloride. That's why we advise against the use of chloride-based accelerators when you're working with the reinforced concrete. And waterproofing, what is waterproofing? We, we know waterproofing in building is, for, is the formation of an impervious barrier over surface of foundations, roofs, walls, and other structural members of building to prevent water penetrations through the surface. But I would say this definition is more describing waterproofing in green, but today we are talking about waterproofing admixtures. So waterproofing admixtures are those products, those chemicals that you add into your concrete during the process of batching, during the process of mixing, when you weigh your cement, you weigh your sand, and other aggregates or components of concrete, you get to weigh your waterproofing admixtures as well. Then you add and mix together. This becomes integral part of your concrete. Types of waterproofing admixtures that we have, according to ACI 212, that is American Concrete Institute, the described permeability reducing admixture into two. Remember, I mentioned permeability reducing admixtures now because when I was talking earlier about the deterioration of concrete, I talked about chemicals also penetrating into your concrete. So when you're talking about waterproofing admixtures, they are not just um, working against water. It's not just water they are preventing. They are preventing other substances to even air to prevent carbonation when you have um, carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide in your concrete, it um, tends to give you a weak surface. That is what we call carbonation. So these waterproofing admixtures, they are not just work waterproofing admixtures. They are reducing the permeability of your concrete so that all these elements will not be able to enter into your concrete. So back to this slide, ACI 212 categorized these admixtures into two. That is permeability reducing admixture for non-hydrostatic conditions, P-R-A-N, we call them PRAN. The other category now is permeability reducing admixture for hydrostatic conditions, which is PRA. So permeability reducing admixture for non-hydrostatic conditions. This category, they are not suitable for where you have hydrostatic pressure. When you're talking about hydrostatic pressure, you're talking about water pressure, where the water pressure is high. You're not supposed to use PRAN. That is permeability reducing admixture for non-hydrostatic conditions. So they are previously referred to as damp proofing admixture, where resistance to water under pressure is very limited. They are not suitable for concrete exposed to water under pressure. And the products under this, we have hydroproof WP100, Hydroproof WP200 and Hydroproof WP300. These are the products for coaster under pram admixtures. Here, this table is showing us the dosage and parking, then the number of bags of cement that each of them can use. You can see here for Hydroproof WP100 is 1.2 to 1 to 2 percent weight of cement. That is the dosage. It's packed in 20 kg bag and um, the whole 20 kg bags will cover for 10 to 20 bags of cement depending on the dosage rate that you're going for. Hydroproof WP200 dosage is 0 0.5 to 1 liter per 50 kg bag of cement. A bag is 50 kg bag of cement and it's packed in 20 liters. So a keg, because it is liquid, a keg is, uh, uh, will cover for 20 to 40 bags of cement. While hydroproof 300 is for the dosage, it is 250 ml to 500 ml for 50 kg cement, also liquid 20 liters. So this will cover for 40 to 80 bags of cement. So where really do we use pran admixtures? I have mentioned that areas where they would not be subjected to water pressure. Say you want to screech, um, you want to do your screeding, you want to plaster your wall, or where the water pressure is low you can use it for concrete casting where your water pressure is low the next category here is the permeability reducing admixture for hydrostatic conditions under this 
we have only the crystalline admixtures. There is no other photoprofine membrane under this. So only crystalline admixtures can be classified as true PRA. They resist water penetration against hydrostatic condition. They are sufficiently stable to resist water under pressure and is used for watertight construction of tanks, foundations, and containment structures. These admixtures can be used below and above grade. We recommend this more below grade because of the water pressure that is below grade. So anywhere that you want to cast your concrete and you know that the water pressure is high, we recommend that you go for crystalline admixture, that is permeability reducing admixture for hydrostatic conditions. Under this, we have crystal 1500, crystal 2000, and crystal 2600. Crystal 1500 is powder and it is referred to as second generation crystalline admixture while crystal 2000 is liquid and also crystal 2600 is liquid. Crystal 2000 is a third generation crystalline admixture while crystal 2600 is fourth generation crystalline admixture. In our next training, we'll be talking about how crystalline admixtures work, what makes them really different, why do they give 95% permeability reduction in our next training. So I hope you would be here with us uh, so you'll be a part of the training. Let me quickly give, let me quickly give an um, overview of um, what this generation thing is all about. So for third generation, these are the major functions, the hydrophilic functions, hydrophilic being that it, uh, it is water loving. It takes in water to create nanocrystals and multiply inside your concrete to pluck out the pores. We would explain this better in our next training. The hydrophobic function is that it prevents additional water penetrating into your concrete while protecting your reinforcing bars it will not let all those chemicals enter into your concrete so that it will not be um, rusting then the fourth generation i mentioned earlier that the fourth generation is crystal 2600 so what makes it different is that it has additional effects which is the plasticizing effect it improves the workability of your concrete aside the hydrophilic, hydrophobic, and protective function. It, holds, it also improves the workability of your concrete. And from this table, like we did for, we talked about for PRAN admixtures for PRA, the dosage for crystal 1500 is 1.5% 1 weight of cement packed in 20 kg bag, and this would cover about 26 bags of cement. While crystal 2000 and crystal 2600, I mentioned earlier, they're both liquid and the dosage for both 0.8 to 1% weight of cement. So anything that you're doing with admixtures generally, it all depends on the weight of cement. And this boils down to the number of bags that you're using per cubic meter. So for both crystal 2000 and crystal 2600, both packed in 20 liters, they cover for about um, 40 to 50 bags of cement for one peg. And um, this brings us to the end of our training today. Don't forget to join us on our next training on how really, how crystalline admixtures work and how you can improve the durability of your concrete with the use of crystalline admixtures. I hope you find this helpful. Thank you.